Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Mexico City. Today is a special, a special episode because today I will shoot a camera that I have never shot before. That uh, This guy that is filming me right now, <laughs> he's somewhere there. <laughs> he gave me his Makina 6.7, so I'm going to shoot this today. I've never shot this before, like I've mentioned, um, but I'm considering getting one. But probably the white one with a 55mm lens. This one has an 80mm. And he just got it back from repair, but it's not fully functional. I mean, it's functional, but it's okay. It will work. So, and the idea is to shoot this probably mostly wide open, just to get the really nice bokeh out of this 80 mil 2.8 and 6.7, which should look really awesome. And the film, because yeah, <laughs> Murphy's Law uh, tried to buy some film, but all the film shops that had 120 film. They were closed today. There were only uh, some shops open, but they only ha had uh, 35 mil. So, Luis also brought some film. That's really nice. And the film I'm going to shoot maybe first is this across, and then maybe some portrait, which should give me some cool results. So, yeah, without further ado, Makina 67, portrait across Mexico City. Let's go. Developing and scanning was kindly provided by Carmen Sita Film Lab. If you want to check them out, the link will be in the description box down below. That's what I call a laptop. I think that this one was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen this. Unfortunately, Luis had only time for a few hours and that meant that I had to film the episode while the lighting wasn't ideal. But nevertheless, I was really glad to finally being able to try out the Makina 6.7. time in the world. The film was pushed two stops in developing, which wasn't necessary, but I wanted to get more contrast out of it.
focus the lens you have to turn the dial in the back of the camera which isn't ideal but my hit rate was surprisingly high even though the depth of field is very shallow when shooting wide open at f2.8. I think that this has to be the last one now. Or like this. <laughs> the frame counter wasn't working and I should have had two frames left, which was technically true, but for some reason that camera only gave me eight photos on this roll. Now, I think now it's done. No. No? What? This can't be. Maybe we found a way to deliver 15. No, really. It's all <laughs> After shooting two or three more black frames, I loaded a roll of Porsche 400. I didn't meter at all and I shot everything basically at f2.8 and 1 500th, which is the fastest shutter speed that the camera offers. Now it's. Okay, now let's count. Maybe you can, say, you can say one, two, and it's gonna be on video. And then, uh, which one was the last one? <laughs> hey, <what? laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it's sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't fall. Okay, number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Okay, perfect. You want to do the Yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. So, first we want to Yeah, sure. Might be a good idea. Why is it that people always wake up the moment? <laughs> but it, I think it worked. Maybe from the front? Uh, it's really hard to get an angle here. I think this, this might work. <laughs> the horse, yes. Yeah. I like one Yes. Yeah, that's that's the camera. Okay, three. What frame was I on? Three. <laughs> Good. <laughs> he looked right in the camera. <laughs> Five.
We went to the spot where usually a lot of mariachis hang out, but unfortunately that day there were only a few present. Okay, three. Three left? I hope I didn't. No, no, no. No, no, you're not. Another messed up shot which isn't the end of the world but I thought I had two shots left and the next one would have been a really cool one. However, also on this roll the camera didn't deliver 10 frames and in this case it really sucked. Not sure what the issue was, but I hope that Luis was able to get the camera fixed by now. All right, so that was the Makina. Um, I have to say it's fun to shoot. The only problem was the frame count on this camera is not working because it's not fully repaired. And also you have no idea when you took the last shot because you can still advance and shoot. Uh, there's no way to tell. So the first roll I shot, I'm not sure which one was actually the last shot or maybe I shot some blank ones. Um, but still, it's fun shooting this. Um, Maybe in the future we'll be able to get my hands on the 55mm version, but yeah, that was good fun. I mean, that's so weird, only having 10 frames. Maybe I should still consider the Fuji GA... What is it called? GA... GA45W, because then you get 16 frames. And it's also a 45mm, which is like equivalent to a 20mm, 28mm in full frame. Hmm. And it's... Even though this camera, I mean, it's for what it is, it's really small. It's still hefty. I mean, you can tell if you take it in your hands. I mean, it looks like plastic, but it's not. It's really, it's, it's metal. So um, it's fairly hefty, but yeah, it's nice. Can't wait to see the images because apparently, uh, according to Luis, the lens is awesome, so. All right, guys, that's it for today's video, at least for the shooting part. Do you have any experience shooting the Makina? Um, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about this camera? I mean, I wanted to shoot this camera for a while and finally it happened. I'm more interested in the one with a 55mm lens, um, but it's very hard to find. Usually when I see one, it's only um, the longer, longer lens, like the 80mm. Um, but still, I mean, it was good fun shooting it, even though the camera had some issues and I got only eight frames out of a roll, which is not a whole lot and it makes the whole thing very costly compared to the camera that I shot last time, the, the Fuji, the 645, which gave me like pretty much double. Um, but still, it was good fun. Manual focus on this camera is better than on the Fuji. I mean, with the thumbs wheel, you can adjust it, it's fine. I much rather have focusing that I can adjust on the lens because I'm used to that from the Leicas that I shoot. Um, but nevertheless, uh, was good. But what got me a little worried is <laughs> the issues he had with his camera. And I don't know if it's a common thing or he's just, Kim's camera was just, it's just a lemon. So it's uh, only this one model he has. Uh, not sure about that. Uh, if you have further recommendations for a camera that fits my needs, like a 28 to a 30 mil range in, compared to a 35 mil lightweight, um, can be a fixed lens, it's totally fine and shouldn't be too expensive even though that's probably hard, makes things a lot harder. Uh, the Mamiya 7, I'm aware of that. Um, I haven't shot it yet. Uh, hopefully I will get my hands on one and try it out. That's also a contender, but I don't know, for some reason um, I'm not so keen on getting one. I don't know why, maybe. It's also because it's really expensive, to be honest. Um, but yeah, if you know any other options, let me know in the comments down below. All right, guys, um, before I show you my favorite prints from the episode, and uh, by the way, you can, again, of course, win a print, no matter which one, just leave a comment below this video. Uh, in the first 24 hours, this episode goes live, and I will pick a random winner, and I will ship a really nice fine art print to you for free worldwide. But before we do that, a quick reminder, 
If you haven't already, you can still pick up one of my street photography zines. This one shot with Hasselblad X-Pen and this one shot with the Leica M6 in Egypt. All right, guys, without further ado, here are the prints. All right, guys, here are the prints. Um, all these shots were taken wide open at f2.8, which gives a, a absolutely crazy, crazy look. And I'm totally loving the results because of that. Uh, in this case, uh, the focus is not spot on. It's uh, not on this eye. It's more on his uh, on the other eye that is further away. So it's not perfectly in focus, which is, of course, <laughs> not easy to get uh, with a manual focus camera and things moving around. And the depth of field is so shallow with this camera. Which, yeah, I mean, the, the look you can get out of it is amazing. And also he, in here, the Acros looks pretty, pretty nice, I have to say. Um, yeah, that's why I picked this one. I think this turned out great. All right, on to the next one, and <laughs> this one here. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen somebody walking around casually with a monitor just in public. It's um, something you probably will not see that often. And in this case, he because he was moving, um, I wasn't sure if I, if I will be able to get the focus because I had to focus manually. I was not zone focusing or anything. And yeah, it worked out pretty well. So I'm really surprised in here, the, the focus is spot on. So I was amazed, <laughs> to be honest. All right, uh, next one. This one, <laughs> I like the scene. I mean, I took some time to take the photo um, and they, rec they saw me or taking a photo, but they didn't mind. And yeah, I'm really happy how this turned out. Um, the portrait, as always, looks great. And there's not that much crazy uh, shallow depth of field to, to be seen here because the, f the the background is not that far away. But still, happy with this one. All right, on to the next one. This group of workers here. <laughs> it's, I mean, here the colors, um, they look nice. The portrait, the overexposed portrait looks really good. And the uh, shadow of the field here works pretty well. I think overall shooting this at 2.8, I mean, it's insane. And I think if you blow this up even more, like a really big print, this might look really, really nice uh, because the uh, amount of details in here is pretty crazy. And the six by seven negative as well helps in this case. All right, next one. And it's this one here. And this might be my favorite one because here you can clearly see how this lens renders and how you how are you how you're able to um, get a super shallow of the field even with this uh, horse and the guy on the horse. So it's fairly big, but still the depth of field is pretty shallow. And yeah, I think this lens is very capable. Um, there's not that, that many op uh, options out there if you want an 80 mil and six by seven with an aperture of f 2.8. And I think the closest one to give you a similar kind of look might be the Pentax 105 um, f2.5. You can, as 2.5? Yeah, I think it's 2.5. Uh, that might be similar, but on this camera, it's an 80 mil f2.8. And most cameras, they have 80 mil f4 or f3.5, And but this is a 2.8, so really, really nice to see how this looks and if you nail the focus and this one it's definitely spot on yeah it works so these are the prints all right that's it for today's episode um as always guys if you like this one give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and we will see each other very soon in the next one until then auf wiedersehen <laughs>